welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. Well, this battle started rather quickly. You're looking at a bishop with three marks on it. Yes, it is Hospitals, and he's back in action. In fact, we got a two part replay featuring somebody who's brand new to the channel as well as Hospitals. So let's see how Hospitals gets on first. Well, it's 4.5 inch howitzer, which is capable of doing 450 alpha and will penetrate through 28 millimeters of armor and a 2.2 meters burst radius. The standard reload, well, it's actually uh, rather fast. It's normally around about the 12 second mark. And if I get my notes in front of me, because I never remember which one it was. Oh, that was close. It's actually 12.37 seconds. So I was close. Oh, he just got a direct hit. And he got 207 hit points from that shot alone. And of course, we can see Hospitals has got 9.67. So he's actually got shaved three seconds off the reload. Let's see what he can do with this M8A1. Because if he hits it, they have so little armor, the M8A1, that, yeah, the shell will probably go straight through him. In fact, that shell, which was actually fired by the... I think it was the Gorilla actually hit fired that one on our team. We've got three Arties on the team. A gorilla, an AMX 13 AM, and of course the bishop. And oh, he's dialing in on that enemy. Oh, he just got another kill. In fact, actually, it's, it's not another kill, it's his first kill. And it was the same Skoda that he hit before. Because it was a blind hit, that one that one that hasn't shown up on the scoreboard. Okay, there's the MHA1. No, we're not going to get a hit. We might get a near miss, but he pulls back before the shell can be fired. He's taking a huge risk, this M8A1. Yep, he gets something off him. Splash for 200, for 200, for 33 hit points. Second round goes in. And he gets more, 87. If he gets a direct hit, that will probably penetrate him. Rounds out again. Uh, that one hits the building. There are some enemy tanks actually in sight, slightly over to the left, near the church. Ah, oh, there's the MHA-1. He fires around into the gap. Oh, big hit. 177. Now, I, is he still there? He is. And just missed him there he was moving fast enough to get away from that shot and he's come to the corner but now we've got a panzer b2 and the msa1 well the panzer b2 wiped out with one round actually hit the engine deck i think and took him out that way the msa1's trying to help the churchill but i think he's going to be more of a hindrance because he's going to get in the way to that churchill and we're seeing an SU-85i, the premium stool. And he's gone down. A direct hit. That's his uh, third kill of the game so far for Hospitals. Okay, who's next? Well, there's a Chi-He making across the gap. And there's a, v a T-28E with the F-30. Well, the Chi-He then made it across the gap. <laughs> he's out of the game. And that's four kills for Hospitals. He's really going for it in this game. It is a tier 5 game with tier 4 tanks in it. He can't get a shot on that Valentine. But I think he can get a shot. Uh, oh, no, he can. Rouse out. And he does get him. And that's his fifth kill of the game. One more. And he gets the top gun. He is wiping these enemies out very, very quickly. He can't get a solution on that T28E at the moment. But... Oh, maybe he will get it. Rounds out. Yes, he did get him. That's his top gun. My gun, they're killing the enemy off very quickly. In fact, there's only two enemies remaining. One of them's the gorilla, and the other one is a sav. And in fact, the sav just got wiped out, so now it's just the gorilla. And you can see Hospitals is racing as fast as he can to get as close to that gorilla as he can to take him out. But I don't think he's going to get a chance. And all he would get is seven kills if he does get it. But he still wants that kill. And here comes the gorilla. He's actually coming towards us. Oh, he stopped to try and shoot the AMX. So we fire at him. And he wipes him out. 
and that is the end of the game. Seven kills. Well, Hospitals was tearing the enemy apart in that game. He got a first-class tanker as well as Bruiser Middle for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 18. He also got a Top Gun for getting at least six kills. He actually ended up with seven in the end. One short of getting Radley Waters and one short of carrying the entire team and getting more shot more kills than anyone else everyone else on the team combined his win rate from that game was 5475 which is well super income standard and quite a bit more let's have a look at the team score well we can see that he did the second highest damage in the game the highest damage turned out to be the bdrg 1b on his team who got a high caliber for 2007 hit points of damage Whereas Hospitals managed to get a top gun and 1,580 hit points. And in third place, well, that's the Churchill one on the enemy team. 1,166 hit points to him. And uh, that's it. So kills. Yep. Hospitals got seven kills. Three kills went to the Stugtai Alsunung B and he picked up a Pascucci's medal. So he must have killed two of the enemy RT in the game. And in third place, we've got the Fifi on the enemy team and their Griller. Both got two kills each. When it came to base XP, he's actually in second place. So he's the second place, first place, and second place on the columns. He got 725 base XP, but he was beaten by the BDRG1B, who also got the highest damage. And the third place, well, that goes to the Cruiser 4 on our team, who got 591 base. Hospitals fired only 14 rounds in the game, which is incredible, really. But the game didn't last very long. Five minutes, three seconds. In fact, this um, analysis of the end battle results is probably longer than the battle. He got nine direct hits on the enemy, four penetrating shots and eight splash. Damage of 1,580, of which 1,512 were at more than 300 meters. So you can see there was one close shot in there, but I think it was towards the end of the game. Eight enemy vehicles were damaged, seven were killed, and he earned 60,000 and one credit profit from the game and 725, which was the base XP from the battle as well. So a pretty incredible game. I'm surprised that's not an ace tanker, but I have the feeling it might be down to the fact that there were tier four tanks in it. And obviously tier four tanks don't earn as much XP as tier fives. And so... That's why he didn't get quite close enough to get the ace, but he had a good game all the same. So let's have a look at the second replay. So I said that is a new player who's only just submitted his first replay to be part of the channel. And yes, he goes straight into a video with hospitals. Well, that takes some doing. So he must have done something pretty incredible. Let's have a watch of his battle. The player in the second battle is Chickens1003 and he's located on the northeast spawn of province in the Bishop, the tier 5 British SPG with a 4.5 inch howitzer uh, based on the hull of the Valentine 2. Game on. Well, something unusual here is that Chickens hasn't put any camouflage on his vehicle whatsoever. It's actually quite helpful just to put a layer of camouflage on the bottom of the hull because that's where it actually records the, uh, the camouflage and puts it into use to hide you from the enemy. So a bit unusual because most people who play RT, they do actually try to put the camo on. You saw that enemy tank, it was an AEC trying to dash across the battlefield as quickly as possible. Going down to this part of the map actually allows chickens to actually get shots on the enemy as they're coming up from the uh, down below. The only problem is, if you do get spotted by the enemy, then there's the possibility that they will shoot at you from the other side of the valley, especially if they've got a long enough RT. And the enemy team has got an M44 and an M41 HMC. But the good news is we've got a T3485M who appeared to get fairly close and yes, we have been spotted. So there's a big problem. The leopard's seen us. And that means the enemy RT is more than likely going to have a go. Now he's managed to get close to the house. And we can see shells are starting to hit the house. Can he get a shot? 
Yes, he does get a shot on the Leopard. Ow! We lost the driver. In fact, we're now losing hit points to that Leopard. But he's about to get hit. Yeah, he does get another hit in, but it's not enough to kill the Leopard. And we have lost some hit points. So going forward actually did have a, well, not a great effect. But the enemy knows where we are, so we have to move away from the spot. You can't stay in the same spot after you've been seen by the enemy. And oh, what did he do there? He actually shot at one of his own teammates and hit the T-14. And I guess that may have been that the T-14 didn't do his job to try and stop that leopard getting a hit. He fires a snap at the Firefly 5C. Didn't get that. You know that you really shouldn't hit your own teammates, no matter what the provocation. If you do, you disqualify yourself from getting any medal from a high caliber rubber. You can still get a medal for something like a Top Gun, but you won't get a high caliber medal the moment you actually hit one of your teammates, because there is a, um, a, a mechanic in the game which Wargaming put in quite some time ago, saying, if you hit your own teammates, forget any uh, medal for high calibre. Okay, he fires another one into that corner. You can see the damage that he actually did take in that uh, confrontation. It wasn't a huge amount of damage, but it... Oh, and we just lost one of our arty. The FB304 is gone, and that means now that Chickens is the only RT left on his team. Now, I suspect that the FB304 got spotted and taken out by one of the enemy. The other thing I, was, I did say earlier is, once you've been spotted by the enemy, never stay in the same place. You have to move, because if they think that you might be still there, they'll fire around in. And if you are still there, then you'll get hit. So the moment he moved, um, thankfully, he moved away from that house after being spotted. So the enemy might not see him next to the house, but they might look for the tracer near the house and then they might see it. You can see he's firing onto the bushes. So he expects the enemy tanks to be up in that corner. Over on the other side of the battlefield, we've got an 88 wasn't very accurate but he did come out of aim mode after he fired he's doing the same again usually best to stay on the target i know it looks great from a distance like this that way you can see what the target is doing if he adjusts okay rounds out note that he's moved away now but he's got a flat and rescue which means he's at maximum range there uh, and he fired, well, a snapshot in just to see if... And it looked like he actually hit something there. He briefly stayed with it for a brief second. And I think the shell did, didn't explode. So I suspect he did actually hit the 88 there. Now, the one thing about the Bishop is you only get 39 rounds of ammunition. And that can be a bit of a problem because he's down to 23 already. He's used up 16. If you blast away with blind shots... Oh, he did get one there. If you blast away with blind shots, you might actually run short on ammo. Okay, VK301H, which is a 30-ton tank, rounds out. Yes! This is what the Valentine's built for, because that guy's hiding behind the rock, but he's close enough that we can loop the shell over the rock and into the VK. And that's a good hit there. 159, got track damage as well. The guy's on one shot now. Next shot will kill. And he got him. That's his first kill of the game for chickens. Now, there are damaged enemy tanks up there because he did fire into those bushes and get a blind hit. But I think they're staying away from that spot now. He's gone back to the, the other bushes. Oh, he got a kill! He took out the T-14 with a blind shot. So the guy was there and was sitting next to the bushes. And he paid for it because, of course, he got wiped out. There's a T-34, very low hit points. He drives back into the shell and he's got his third kill. 
Now, you might get spotted if you go over this direction. The tree's down, which actually does provide some cover. Somebody must have knocked it down for a bit of help. But there's the 88, and he is very low on hit points. No, just missed. Don't back up too much, because you might get spotted by the guys. Well, actually, the, all the enemy in the south have been wiped out, so you can't be spotted by them now. I was wondering if that might be the reason why it didn't go off and give a six sense warning. He's having a look round. There's no enemy tanks to the south, no. They're all on the other side of the battlefield at the moment. They're one up on us at the moment. Very difficult to spot them at the moment. We really do need the AMX CLC, who's right up in the north of the map, on the west side of the map, to actually come down from those heights and find out where the enemy is. Okay, we've got a 40 TP. Let him move about. Yep. We need him stationary, ideally. Okay, he's moving out. Now we've got a shot. Clean shot. Wait for it to reload. And he fires it in. Oh, we got him! We didn't get to see him get killed, and it's normally nicer for the, for the people who view the video for you to stay and watch what actually happens to the enemy because they want to see the enemy killed. And also, they want to see if you get a blind shot to hit, just like when you hit the T-14. We didn't see that shot. You, only, you looked at it from a distance and fired, and it would have been nice to see that T-14 suddenly explode and be visible again. Okay, so there are a few enemy tanks now on our side. The Stug, well, he's getting close. We're also running short on ammo. Only 10 rounds left. So you have to be careful. Don't want to run out. Stug's backing up. As far as we can see, he's got a friend with him. A Junu, who was down at the base. That's that new heavy tank, the Japanese heavy tank. The good thing about this battle is that Chickens has landed in a tier 6 game with tier 5 tanks in it, which means that he is going to be earning extra and the Stug's on fire and it's still burning. It's still... Rams out. And he got him! <laughs> wow. Landed the shell on the engine deck and got himself a fire and then fired the kill shot, the coup de grace, in and took the guy out. Now, can he get a shot on that Junu? He's popped up suddenly. He's on the road on the way up. The amusing thing is we've got an M6 below him and the SU-85 above him. As you know, the SU-85, 85mm gun, it's the Soviet version of the Stug. Although they never actually built them, it supposedly was for those stugs that the Soviets did capture and then repurpose for their own use. Unfortunately, we just lost the M6. But that was a good hit into the turret. So, can the stug survive? Trying to line a shot up on the Junu. No, it wasn't fully dialed in. He's moving about quite a bit. That's why the rescue's moving about. Okay. Fires, and we've lost the HU-85I. So now the scores are even, except the enemy team got two RT, we've only got one. He fires one into the gap. Well, the problem is now he's very, very low on, our, on shells. He's only got three left out of that entire magazine of 39. And that makes him a bit vulnerable. In fact, at this moment, I would say the best place for him would be to join the support M10. He's asking the M10 to support him, but it might be better if he had the support of the M10 because he's got... The M10's got better view range. He's only got a view range of 250 meters. The M10's much longer view range. On top of this, he's low on hit points. If the Junu finds him, it would only take one shot to take him out, I think. The 
Juno's a new tank. I believe it's got the 105 millimeter gun, but don't quote me on that. I think it is a large caliber gun. Here he comes. Well, he does get a hit, but unfortunately he takes around it. It's not a, a 105, it's actually a 90 millimeter gun, I think. And there you go, he's out the game. Yeah, he took a hit for 208. It would have been better if he'd been back with the M10. The M10 would have spotted the Junu. And in fact, actually, the AMX ELC killed the Junu from the other side of the battlefield. If he'd gone back to the M10, then he still would have got a few hit shots off at the Junu before the Junu got close to the M10. And so he still would have been in the game, although with only three rounds, well, two rounds of ammunition, because he actually used that one to get a hit on the Junu before he died. Well, the last remaining enemy tank is a T-67 and an M41 HMC. I suspect that the M41 is waiting around here in the bushes to get a shotgun. Well, he's not. And we haven't heard of a sixth sense going off, so it seems to me that they are hiding. There's the M41. He's up on the cliffs. The MX ELC seen him. It's going to finish him off. He's got a 90mm gun, so he can do the necessary on the M41. The M41 goes back into cover. We're down to the last two minutes of the game. I think the T1 needs to stay in cover. I'm not sure if that was the shot that was just fired at him. It wasn't fired by the um, by the enemy M41 HMC. And I don't think he could actually splash the T1 unless he goes down to the far, right to the far end. But then he would be vulnerable to the uh, AMX. Yes, he missed. He didn't get close enough. And here comes the M10. And it looks like the t 67s coming in to try and get a reset. And he takes a hit. And there's the reset. But I think the t 67s tracked. And now he's done for. Okay, so we're firing HE rounds at that T-67. And he's getting shot after shot in. But he gets the kill. Now that means it's only the M41. And he's gone. And that's the end of the game. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was an ace tanker game for Chickens 1003 in the Bishop. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. In fact, he got five, one short of getting a top gun and one third of the enemy team. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 19, and he also got a win eight of 10,311, which is super unicum standard and quite a bit more. But sadly, he did get wiped out in the game. And I think that was a tactical error. He should have gone back to the M10. And then with the M10, he could have got more shots on that Junu and stopped the Junu from getting close to him. I did check the Junu. It's a new tank. It's just come out. It's got an 88 millimeter gun and 230 alpha. So, yes, he was bound to get wiped out with just two shots from the Junu. And that's what actually happened in the end. And he'd already taken some damage anyway from the Leopard who popped up earlier. But uh, yes, it's better not to confront a heavy tank uh, if you're in a, an RT. If you've got somebody who can act as your eyes from a distance, then they can help you to get damage on the enemy as they approach you. He only had two shots left anyway, but if he'd actually kept that third shot and gone to the back of the map with the M10, then by the time the Junu came close, he would have got those three shots in and possibly even finished off the Junu altogether. So let's have a look at the team scores and see where he was. Well, this is interesting because look at this. You can see now that Chickens actually got 2,448 hit points of damage, which is the highest damage in the game. But he was denied the high caliber because he shot at his teammate in the T14. Yes, yeah, so there you go. You cost yourself a medal there by actually shooting at your teammate. The high 
Calibre actually went to the Jew He got 2,241 hit points of damage, slightly less. He was in second place on damage on the game, but he got the medal instead of uh, Chicken's 1,003. Anyway, when it came to the third highest damage in the game, that went to the T67 on the enemy team. He got a defender medal by resetting the cap on the T1 heavy and 1,469 with the ELC on our team, who was across the valley, got the Orlix medal and a Vescucci medal. So he got both enemy artists and he took out higher tier opponents. He got 1,365. When it came to kills, we can see top scorers were Chicken 1003 and the Junu. Both got five kills each. Four kills went to the MX ELC, who was still alive at the end. And three kills went to the 40 TP on the enemy team. Now, that guy was a bit silly because he actually moved out and gave Chickens a perfect shot to actually lob the shell over. But I would say to Chickens, please stay with the vehicle when you aim at it. We want to see the enemy vehicle explode or to see where the shell falls in relation to the enemy vehicle if it doesn't hit the tank. Or if the enemy tank is a blind shot, then if you uh, see the shell disappear uh, and then suddenly it gets declared as a kill, you know you've got a blind kill out of the game. You did actually get a blind kill on that enemy T14 who happens to be just below the 40 TP. So just a little hint uh, for our videos, because I'd always say to people who look away after they shoot, that you're actually denying the viewer a good sight of what you've actually done. You need to see what happens to the enemy tanks. So when it came to uh, the base XP, we can see, yes, it's Chicken's 1003. He's the only player to get over a thousand base in the game. 1,101. Second highest goes to the AMX ELC with 941. And third place, well, it's that M10 RBFM. He did come through for us in the end because he actually got rid of the M41 HMC. He got 819 hit points of damage in that game. So let's have a look at detail. He fired 37 rounds. Well, he still had two rounds left at the end of the game. He did use a lot of rounds. Surprisingly, a lot of his blind shots actually did hit targets because he did fire a lot of blind ones. He got 17 direct hits on the enemy. None of them penetrated, but he did get splash on 24. So some of those blind shots definitely worked, especially the T14 kill. 2,448 hit points of damage, of which 2,002 were at more than 300 meters. Well, a few of those were shots across the valley, but most of them were the enemy tanks that were actually hiding down at the south end on the east side of the map. He managed, uh, he did receive six hits from the enemy, four penetrations, two splash hits as well. The uh, penetrating shots for, from the um, uh, Leopard, he, two of those actually hit him, and he also received two hits from the Junu. And the splash, well, I think that was the enemy was trying to get him, and uh, they failed. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, five were killed, 495 hit points of damage assistance. Now, he, on a premium count, he actually earned a profit of 70,643 credits, so that's good. He got 25 bonds for a mission achievement, and he got 1,651 experience points. But I suppose the lesson to be learned from this game is don't shoot your teammates. <laughs> don't, because you miss out on medals if you do. And a lot of What RT Noobs members have experienced this themselves. They've actually had a great battle. They've earned enough to get the high caliber and suddenly it gets taken away from them because they fired at one of their own teammates by accident or by design. And as a consequence, it was denied to them because that mechanic by wargaming is still in effect. They didn't take it out when they took out team damage. So if you do fire at your teammates, you will lose a medal. Now, we, there's been a few instances where people have fired at their teammates and they've still got the high caliber. But I think that was where the shot wasn't a direct hit on their own teammates or it wasn't a splash hit. It was just a stun hit. We're not quite certain about those rules, but we are certain if you fire at your teammates purposely, on purpose, you lose the medal. So please don't do that. But it was a good game by Chickens because he did get the highest damage in the game. He did get the highest number of kills in the game. And some of his shots actually did have a major impact on the battlefield. So well done uh, for your first video. I hope you enjoyed both of those replays, both Hossballs and Chickens. Uh, and I think we're going to get used to those names appearing quite often 
If you did enjoy this one, please give it a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.